You may have noticed if you're sculpting in the voxel room of 3D Coats and happen to be in surface mode, at the top of your user interface you now have some new options that are available whenever you hold the shift key or control shift key combination. You have a drop list here that allows you to select from the menu. You can see that both menus are identical. You have these new options that not only allow you to smooth, but you have a more powerful smoothing algorithm, as well as relax, tangent smoothing. Then you have a number of tools that are not directly a smoothing function, but they are similar or have a smoothing type of effect. So the focus of this is based off of live clay and its development and these are all located again in surface mode only. With that being said, here in live clay you have new tangent smoothing, you also have clean clay which basically takes some of the other smoothing functions and tries to consolidate them by allowing you to choose from a list here in the tool options panel. And You could also set the amount of detail when you're smoothing. So you have reduce, decimate, reconstruct, and average. So this is essentially the same as relax. So instead of going through this, I'll go ahead and try to demonstrate these through this new list that we have. To better demonstrate, I'm going to hit the 4 key to turn wireframe on. And we'll zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, I have an area that's relatively low poly and an area that's uh, quite high. And there's a good deal of contrast in between the two. So let's hold the shift key and I'll choose standard smoothing to start off with. As you can see it's essentially just smoothing the shape and you may find sometimes if you're working on a very dense mesh that the standard smoothing does not provide as intense a smoothing effect as you may want even with the mount turned all the way up. So. The next option is powerful smoothing and when you hover over this you'll see a tooltip that explains it's actually doing three different functions simultaneously. Not only is it smoothing the shape but it's performing local decimation and topological refinement. So let's go ahead and choose that, hold the shift key and you can see how that works. I'm going to increase my brush size here and it's more evident. The greater the brush size the more it's decimating. You can see it's, it's quite powerful uh, in the way that it's smoothing so this may be what you want. You could also choose this as your default type when you hold the shift key and then with control shift you could choose something like tangent smoothing which allows you to apply more subtle smoothing when you need it. For example, tangent smoothing will essentially try to keep the shape but it will try to optimize or refine the topology. So let's go ahead and choose tangent smoothing. I'm sorry, I'll leave powerful smoothing and then with tangent smoothing chosen on control shift it's trying to maintain this shape here. I'll reduce my brush size a bit and you can see it's a little bit more subtle when you reduce your brush size as, as well as reduce the smoothing amount. So this would be a great choice for those high detail areas where you want to apply just a slight bit of smoothing as well as maybe hard edge parts of your model. All right, so let's choose relax. You may find that this is probably one of your better options when you're trying to create a smoother transition between high density and low density sometimes that might actually be uh, visible so let's go ahead and bring our intensity up and 
and brush size up. And as you can see, it's trying to average the size of the polygons within your brush radius. Decimate will perform a similar function in that it will allow us to smooth the transition between high poly and low poly areas of our mesh. But it will do it in a different way. It will reduce the areas where 3D coat doesn't feel it needs to, such as flat areas and so on. And it will provide a higher level of density in the areas where it deems that it is needed. So let's go ahead and look at that. Again, it creates a nice subtle transition between low poly and high poly. And if you'll notice, this is an especially good brush to use just like Tangent Smooth if you want to maintain the shape but kind of optimize the polygonal structure. So let me go ahead and point out here. You can see it's pretty dramatic here in the low polygon areas, but not so dramatic here. Okay, so let me bring the brush size down. Now let's look at reduction. This is essentially the same as using clean clay with reduce. And also, it's almost the reverse of live clay. Live clay will dynamically increase the tessellation, and it will also sculpt at the same time unless you bring the depth value down to zero, which it is at this point in time. So as I brush, you can see it tessellating. If I bring my brush size up, you'll see it's not tessellating as much. When I bring the brush size down, it tessellates more. Okay, so you can see how that works. So with that in mind, reduce will do just the opposite. It's going to decrease the number of polygons under your brush. And the smaller the brush size, the more detail it will leave behind. The larger the brush, the more effect it's going to have, the more reduction is going to take place. So extra detail or add detail is the same as using live clay with no depth. Okay, so bring your brush size down, extra detail, I'm going to hold the shift key, and you can tessellate on the fly the same way. And then with the control shift option, I'm going to choose reduce. So with a very small brush, I can add extra tessellation where I need it. For example, maybe like the eyes where you want to apply some really fine wrinkles and so on. But maybe around the cheek area, you want to go in and hold a control shift key and actually perform some reduction. So the last option is reconstruct and to be honest with you I'm not even sure this belongs in this menu because as you can see it's very rough when using on a surface. Now it's very effective if you're wanting to eat away at very small thin areas just as smoothing would do when you're in voxel mode. But apart from that you probably won't find too many uses for this particular tool. Nevertheless, all these new additions should add some speed and efficiency to your overall sculpting workflow in 3D Coat. So I hope it helps, and thank you for watching.